Hey. Hey, welcome to my garage. <laughs> I love it, thank you. I uh, really started getting interested in uh, robots when I realized that I could write some code on my computer and something would really come alive. This robot is called Ernie. It makes a map of the garage just by driving around. And then it, based on the map, it can uh, figure out where it is. Ernie's creator is Rohan Agrawal, a high school student who's been building robots since he was nine. Ross has really helped me personally because it's allowed me to make robots that I otherwise could not have. The Ross that Rohan is talking about isn't a person. It's the robot operating system. And it's the underlying code that makes Ernie work. But Ross doesn't just run Ernie. It runs robots everywhere. If you think about a robot as a house, Ross is kind of like the plumbing that makes it all work. Because so many people share this common plumbing, it makes it easier for us to build more and different kinds of robots. The robot operating system came to life in 2007 at Stanford University and then moved to Silicon Valley incubator Willow Garage. That's where some of the smartest and wildest robotics thinkers, including Leila Takayama, had the freedom to pursue their ideas, no matter how crazy. And it did get a little weird. One of their biggest projects was the Personal Robot 2, or PR2. PR2 was this big honkin' robot. It was a 32 degree of freedom, $500,000 mobile manipulation platform, which was like, whatever. It was a very expensive robot that ran around and grabbed stuff. PR2 was fun, and more importantly, it proved that the Ross code that ran it actually worked. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. When Ross first got put on PR2, it was rough. And when things broke, it was kind of hard to fix. Layla realized that Ross could be something bigger. Just like how Microsoft Windows made computers easy to use, Ross could open robotics to everyone. If only it weren't so fiendishly complicated. One thing that I started talking with the team about was, you know, we need other people to be able to use the code too. Otherwise, people aren't going to want to play if you make it too hard to use. So we ended up breaking down the code into usable bits and making sure that people who don't sit next to us could still use the code too. Layla and the Willow Garage team tweaked and tinkered with Ross and eventually handed it over to a startup, Open Robotics, which used to be a nonprofit but now takes on commercial work. The company doesn't build robots. It develops the Ross software and hardware kits that people all over the world use to make their own. Brian Gerke is its CEO. In Silicon Valley, people are in a, a secret place working on something that may or may not ever see the light of day. They may or may not ever be able to talk about it. And it's a very different experience to be able to, as we do here, all day, every day, just write code and put it out in the world. Ross code is packaged into different applications and uploaded to the web, where anyone can download it for free. And everyone does. From giant companies like Intel and Qualcomm to military contractors and small startups. Mirza Shah is the co-founder of Simbi Robotics, the startup behind Tally. So the various tools that we use to build Tally, for example, the sensor drivers, the navigational algorithms, and the 3D cameras, those all come from Ross. This oddball hangs out in the aisles at retail stores and can tell which products are in the wrong place, which have the wrong price tag, and what needs restocking. It wouldn't have been possible for us to you know, get to market you know, within two years without Ross. Things that like were seemingly like complex, like autonomous map building, 
really hard algorithms. Now it's like 11 year olds are able to download and run these algorithms. And that's what makes Open Robotics different from most other Silicon Valley companies. It relies on a community to make it better. The kids tinkering in the garage, new robotics companies, and tech giants who use ROS share their adapted code with other users. Just like with anything that you put out in the world, more of the feedback is, hey, this didn't work, or hey, you know, how do I use this thing? But it's, it's just a different experience to be able to put it out there constantly as you're building it. ROS has a learning curve. You're really getting into the code and trying to figure out where the problems are. But it's always kind of exciting when it finally works. Ernie is just a fun hobby for Rohan now. But someday, the ROS code he used might end up in a driverless car or an autonomous lawnmower. Or maybe something we haven't even imagined yet. In 20 years, I would hope that any random person walking up to a robot would feel so unremarkable and natural that it would be just like interacting with like a tool that's like so familiar that you don't really think about it as a tool anymore. And I think if we could get there, that'd be pretty great. <laughs>